Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile Tester Sample Paper Discussions. We are in Chapter 2 talking about Agile testing principles, practices and processes. And we shall look forward to see some more questions from the set B of this particular tutorial series. And uh, here we help you understand more about what exactly is the context of answering a question appropriately right. The next question in the list we have is question number 19. And the number 19 question is, what does a burn, char burn down chart measure? So I think uh, we have been discussing on this different pro attributes of the Agile methodology and where one of them was also to talk about how do you provide the status update in Agile methodology. And uh, one of them was, of course, the burn down chart, which talks about uh, certain attributes of the ongoing progress and in, in simple words it just gives you at any point of time the amount of work remaining to be done in particular sprint so as we look into that we talk about uh, the you know the number of story points what you started with following that over a period of time how exactly the stories are getting burnt down and that's where at any point of time if you look at this particular graph or this particular report this report will show you the amount of work remaining at any point of time within a particular iteration and that's where this report becomes more helpful so keeping it uh, i think very straightforward we have the four options but we already have the answer with us so let's look at what exactly the options are trying to say option a says schedule uh, the time against uh, expected budget now that's more of like estimation but not about the actual consumption of the effort and time and what is the amount of work remaining. So it is a part of the estimation, but that happens much earlier in the life cycle and burn down chart does not do that. Second, return on investment is also a certain calculations based on the amount of investment you do. And at the same time, what is that return you get from here? And that's not something what we are again talking about burn down chart see how quickly activities move between stations that's more of your efficiency to complete a work on time and move it to the next station but that's not what a burn down chart does rather the option she is taken care by the status that is task board or task status or the scrum board so there are different names people do carry along with it but in simple words these are the task boards which carry the information related to option c and we are just left with one option d says the amount of work still to be done against the time allocated exactly true the two axes on the uh, burn down chart represents the number of story points on a y axis and x axis is the time that is in number of days so put together the right answer here is d the amount of work work still to be done against the time allocated is what a burn down chart measures or represents within a particular sprint. Moving on to the next question, which is question number 20, and it talks about the task board, which is the other attribute of Agile, and also talks about the progress measure. So what does a task board show? So again, with a context understanding, the task board basically represents the number of columns being called as stations, and uh, each column may have different number of status or even one at a time. And at any point of time, when a card is in a particular column, it represents the current status of that particular card. So generally, by default, you do have to do in progress and done, or sometime to do in progress, in review, and done as common stations in a particular task board. But it is not restricted at any point of time, an organization looking forward to simplify this further, or would like to have more number of status being you know, to give you more clarity about the detailed steps being performed, you can always have any number of columns on your task board. At the end of the day, the team should be able to communicate the progress and the current and right status of a task at any point of time using this task board. So let's look at the options. What exactly do we have? The task option A says the task completed against the budget spent. No, the task completed is more of like a completion check towards the completion of the goals of the project rather than talking about the task board which is rather a monitoring or monitoring option or ongoing progress tracking b says return on investment of course not though it is a measure but task board does not represent that c the progression of the tasks selected for an iteration uh, yeah, that looks pretty similar to what we have discussed. It talks about the ongoing progress of each and every task 
within a particular sprint using this particular board. And option D says the number of tasks still to be done against the time allocated. That's more of like this burn down chart, which we just answered in the previous question. So I think we are very, very clear and uh, understood that what exactly task board is all about. And in that context, the right answer here is C, the progression of the task selected for an iteration is what gets represented by the task board and has several columns and various status under that. Let's move on to the next question and the question number 21 is our next question. Which of the following is a reasonable expectation for a test case during its life? I think this is more of like a concept based question rather than to the point. You need to understand how the journey of a test case is within a particular project or towards a particular life. Now, of course, a common understanding says that what could be the life of a test case? All we do is create a test case, then we go ahead and run it, and then that's it. The job is done. Now, a test case can also be shortlisted for regression testing. A test case can also be upgraded to the better needs because sometimes you do see that maybe you're writing test cases, but your test cases are not efficient enough to perform the required testing, or sometimes the test cases are not efficient enough to identify the defect what you are looking at. So in that context, it becomes very important to keep revising and reviewing your test cases. In fact, correlating to your principle number five from the foundation that is pesticide paradox. Over a period of time, your test cases may be redundant and certainly may not be able to perform the required testing as the product evolves over a period of time. Given that a product is evolving over a period of time, the test cases also needs to be revised to find new and different defects. In case not taken care of, the test cases will be executed. In fact, they will also pass, but they will not help you to identify the defects what you're looking forward to. So make sure that the pesticide paradox should be applied here, and we shall look forward to keep revising and updating our test cases over a period of time. So the life cycle of a test case is not going to end just with the execution, but over a period of time, you look forward to improvise it, update it, or revise it to make sure that the test cases are always efficient and help you identify a defect. So which of these following is a reasonable expectation of a test case during its life and options are option a it will not change of course that cannot be taken after the justification we just provided you b it will be automated and will require only minimal maintenance uh, that's a good point but we cannot just always make that hard-coded statement that automation would be limited to minimal maintenance sometime it could be you know a lot more than minimal but uh, sometime it can be hectic as well so it's not just that the test cases will be converted and there the journey of the test case gets over uh, when it turns into automated test script. C, it will evolve with the software, of course. That's what is correlated to our discussion, what we just had. And uh, that's going to be the journey of a test. It does not retire, but of course, keep evolving over a period of time as the product evolves, as the software evolves. And D says it will be owned by a developer who writes the associated code. Uh, not necessarily, but if in case you're talking about TDD, you may get confused that, uh, you know, TDD, the developer owns the test. Of course, yes, but the question was not about that, right? The question was about the test lifecycle, which was in generic. If they ask you in particular about TDD and then they ask you who owns the test cases, then the answer could be the developer. So in that context, they're just trying to take you away sometime by just you know, distracting you to that context that you start thinking about TDD and pick the right answer as T. But let me tell you the right answer here is C, it will evolve with the software over a period of time because the test cases may not remain the same as the product changes over a period of time. Thus, the test case also needs to evolve accordingly. So put together, these are the three questions what we covered in this tutorial today. Should you have anything else, do let me know. I'm always there to help you. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.